Many Namibian individuals and organizations depend heavily on telecommunication connection, which for years has been made possible by telecom. However, the telecommunication company has been experiencing connectivity challenges of late, which seem to frustrate many of their clients. To update the public on the ongoing challenges, we are joined in studio by Telecom Namibia's Chief Executive Officer, that's Doc Listen Lishana Pinda. Good morning, Doc, and welcome to GMN. Good morning, and thanks for having us. Okay. Now, Doc, in recent years, what have been the main connect, uh, connectivity challenges that Telecom has been facing, and what are perhaps the factors that have contributed to these issues? So one of the key ones is the theft of copper. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a vast copper network across the, across the country, mm -hmm. and now recently with, with uh, COVID um, and with the war in the Ukraine, the copper price has um, increased. And so there's some criminals, criminals that's seeing an opportunity. And so we're seeing a, a surge there in the, in the copper cable that's every week and all across the country. A uh, second key one is um, telecom Namibia's ailing infrastructure. So we've got a network that's not been upgraded for quite a few years now. And as the new executive team, we are looking into modernizing the network. And then you have the regular ones around road construction or contractors that are digging up or cutting, uh, cutting the fiber. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that being said, perhaps, are you able to elaborate specifically on which specific regions or scenarios where customers have reported connectivity issues and why is it so perhaps frequent in, in those uh, specific areas, the specific area where they mostly complain? So a, a key one that's of recent, before I go into the, uh, the, the, the local part, the international part that's been affected was the, the break in the WEX uh, submarine uh, cable that happened off the coast mm -hmm. um, of, of Cape Town. And then at the same time, the SAT-3 cable, both at the same time, mm -hmm. um, that, were, that were cut. So the teams are working now and looking to restore those in September. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we promised, then we're going to look at giving free data to our, our customers. So that connectivity comes in through Swakopmund and then it affects the rest of the country. But we've now uh, um, looked at connecting through other, other inter international uh, routes. Yeah. Now, the big one about the, the copper and the areas where it's mostly focused and concentrated on is in Vintuk. Vintuk has the highest uh, connectivity needs and largely in the, in the industrial areas where the businesses are, are, are connected. That's where you see the theft happening quite, uh, um, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, in areas such as Komastal, Hans Dietrich, Gensha Street, Gensha Street here in Vintuk is a key one. And the, the, the recent one that's been coming is uh, Kitman's whip mm -hmm. that we've seen where, where it's now also uh, um, started to, 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 to happen. Okay. Specifically, these areas that you're mentioning in Munduk, why, why seems to be the same, the same problem that's reoccurring over and over again in those specific areas? Um, I think the, the, the reason is that um, in some of these uh, um, areas, we, we, when, when the copper gets stolen, we then fiberize. Mm -hmm. In some of those parts of the areas, it's not easy to, to put, in the, put in the fiber because at the end, the customer uh, has got the copper connection to the house. So we're looking to really fiberize it. I think a big part of that is because the network is so vast, mm -hmm. it's difficult to supervise. So at times we've had security uh, a guard security company monitoring all of those, and that comes at a huge cost um, as well. And then it goes down, and then it comes kicks back up. But it's largely in areas where it's where the, the the monitoring, and because the network is so vast, and then we're not able to police each and every part of it. And in the industrial areas, that's 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 where it's uh, um, where it's the biggest. Okay. While talking about some of the challenges, we know that there's myself as a customer for, of Telecom Namibia is the issue of the billing system in the past. Has, has that been resolved perhaps? Because that also appears to be one of the biggest issues for, for, for your customers. So the good news there is that when we launched our business plan, we also signed a contract for the project to replace the billing system. So the project is, is well on its way. Uh, we're fast tracking that to see if we can activate that uh, um, soonest in various phases to start out migrating custom, the mobile customers particularly uh, onto the uh, um, uh, um, new billing system. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're planning to do by next year. We would then migrate that fully. It's a big project. Mm -hmm. It's quite a he heavy project, but we've started doing the work around that. So one of the few challenges that we've also been experiencing the billing side is as we migrate customers 
to uh, the new uh, uh, billing system, where we've got system failures with the existing billing system that's been outdated. And it's been quite a challenge for Telecom Namibia to get to the stage where, where we were, um, given uh, uh, procurement bureaucracies and legal challenges and all of that. But we're at a point where we've actually started the project and we would be starting to migrate mobile customers and then broadband customers onto the new billing system. Okay. Now, in terms of... Uh external factors that perhaps maybe in your opinion that are also affecting the operations, are there any uh, regulatory cons constrictions that are preventing telecom from effectively managing its, uh, its, its environment or in, in which it operates in and likely to impact the, the services that telecom provides? Absolutely. So we know that we have to grow our footprint. We need more base stations. Mm -hmm. We know that our customers are experiencing congestion. That's why during peak hours, customers may not be able to get the full quality uh, service, uh, particularly when they're serving the internet mm -hmm. uh, after working hours and so on. So we know that that's caused by congestion. We've done the test and we've gone out to apply for new sites. The key challenges we're experiencing there is with uh, environmental impact approvals. Mm -hmm. It takes forever to get those clearances, and sometimes it's non-responsiveness from the environmental commissions. Mm -hmm. um, and so we really urge our counterpart, our stakeholder, uh, in terms of that, to really come to the party and, and help us get those clearance certificates. A second one is access to the land or access to site. Mm -hmm. uh, and there again, we want to urge the city of Vintuk to look at their processes as how we can fast track approvals mm -hmm. for new land site. Um, we're happy to say that in September, 13th of September, we'll be launching a new site in Koreanghap, but it took forever to get that site because we know that the congestion issues and we need a new base station there. Mm -hmm. And so the approvals to get access to land has been a big, has been a big challenge. But we've spoken to Cran. We've had a meeting with the city of Vintuk and we're hoping that now they can fast track so that we can roll out those new base stations and that can ease the congestion and the connectivity um, issues. So we've got lots of applications with the city of Vintuk yeah. um, that can address these issues for us. Well, one of the issues that has come and we've seen of recent is the issue of sh sharing infrastructure, especially telecommunications company, to obviously cut the cost of services to, 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 to the consumers. What's the progress been made with regard to that area? We've made good progress. So we've uh, sat with our sister company, uh, MTC. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had recent engagements. We're finalizing our agreement where we can share uh, more space and more tower, mobile towers particularly. So that's been, uh, um, that's been going, uh, going well. Mm -hmm. um, um, in terms of uh, um, the other parties, we're also talking to them on sharing. But as you know, as Telecom Namibia, we're the owner of Powercom. Mm -hmm. And Powercom is our tower company, and we share our infrastructure with all of the other, other operators. And now we're looking at the reciprocal sharing um, and that's been going well. So what that means is if we can rather share tower instead of duplicating yeah. the cost that goes into setting up those towers, the, we can offer afford a, a, a cheaper service to the customers because the capex would be less on rolling out those towers. Okay. Now, you, earlier you mentioned the issue of that, you know, trying to shift towards areas such as uh, fiber optic expansions in terms of technological advances. Are these proving to be improving connectivity or is uh, the traditional way still the most effective way? So uh, we're trying to uh, uh, change our, we, we're looking at digitalizing, right? So there's a digital transformation process that we're going through. So we're looking at, we, in the past we've changed from analog um, to digital and now we need to change to IP. So fiber can best uh, um, cater for that particular environment. Mm -hmm. And so with that, we're rolling out the fiber network throughout, uh, throughout the country and looking how we can fiberize. Mm -hmm. In a town such as Hobabas, for example, when we fiberize a big part of the town, you can see that the, the, the service quality improves, the complaints around, the, uh, um, around uh, quality service uh, uh, drops, the, the issues around copper theft goes down because they go and then they cut the fiber and then realize, but this is not copper, I can't resell it. So it's got all of those improvements. And so we want to fiberize nationally across the whole country. We've got plans, Ochiborongo, uh, um, Rundu, and so on. And as you know, in Oranyamund, it's the first town that's going to be a proper smart city mm -hmm. where we are fiberizing every street mm -hmm. in Oranyamund. Okay. Now, the other issue that you had mentioned was the issue of the ailing infrastructure, you know, so, so some of the challenges that Telecom is facing. Why is it taking so long? Or is Telecom, why isn't, weren't you aware that your infrastructure is becoming dilapidated and you need to change with time? 
So this is a historic issue. And so when we came in, we through our uh, plan we called Operation Autumn Cleaning, we looked back and we said, but how much have we invested in our infrastructure? Now, um, globally, the trend is you must invest roughly 15% of your revenue back into your infrastructure. Yeah. For years, that's not been the case for telecom. And so we've upped the scale in terms of that particular investment. We need over 2.3 billion. Yeah. Also, there has been some governance challenges that Telecom Namibia has been going through in those periods where some of these projects, such as the billing system, was not coming through. And if anyone looks at that period, you could see it was a period that was a little difficult for Telecom Namibia. Now where we are, we've got a board and a manager team that's really focused on changing that around, making sure that we're investing in the infrastructure. And so because for a long period, some of that infrastructure has not been modernized as it should have been, we are experiencing fail, uh, failures here and there. And what our team is dedicated on is modernizing that particular network. And it's gonna come at a huge cost, but we've got a plan around that. We've got funds made available that's already uh, come through. So in this financial year, uh, we're looking at um, over uh, it's at 900 million that we would be investing uh, in that infrastructure. And with a billing system that's over 400 million, that's already started. That's a, that's a lot of money when you spoke, around about 1.1 billion. Would you then say perhaps that this 1.1 billion that you're hoping to invest both in the billing system and your infrastructure, what will then do you expect to be the overview within a year or two in terms of the telecom's current, I mean, network infrastructure and coverage area? So our coverage would increase. So one of the projects that we have is the mobile coverage. We only have roughly 300 base stations, 350 base stations across the country. MTC had just recently launched the, the thousand tower. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a bit of a gap to go. So in this plan, we're looking at 500 towers, new ones that we need to roll out. Mm -hmm. And those towers need to cover 4G. Mm -hmm. That's, that's part, a big part of that budget. Then we've got the fiber rollout in towns like Chibarongo, Rundu, as we've, as we've mentioned, and also fiberizing those areas where the copper is, take out the copper, put in the, put in the fiber. Then we've got the billing system, and then we've got the FMC core that's going to allow us uh, innovative products and services that we can offer to our customers in terms of prepaid services when you do the recharges and all of those. Then all of these recharge issues like we've experienced now, those are going to be things of the past. The hardware is going to be renewed. We're going to go into a complete new system. And we're not going to have a challenge where the hardware fails and it's difficult to source that hardware secondhand. That's literally the challenges that we that we experience. And, but with that, we want to really thank our customers that are patient and are giving their say service. We have really have plans. We've got the funds and we are rolling that out. It will take a little bit of a while, but we will, we will definitely get there. Okay, Doctor, why are we, st why are we still talking about erecting infra uh, what are towers with 4G connectivity when the world is moving towards 5G? So, in Namibia and in Africa in general, we 4G, 4G, and then 4.5G is really uh, um, uh, uh, the key, and that's a good service to produce. So our towers will also be 5G enabled. Okay. So we will also be getting spectrum mm -hmm. from the regulator mm -hmm. for 5G services deployment by the end of, end of this year. So they will be 5G ready. Mm -hmm. The th problem with uh, 5G is the business case. And you need a use case because 5G is very, very expensive to roll out. Mm -hmm. So you may, be, you may need more of a private network for 5G for in manufacturing and so on. So we're looking at those business cases. Namibia is an agricultural-based country, so we're speaking to a few of our customers that are in the agricultural sector where we can look at connecting them on, the f on, on 5G. That's got low latency and greater throughput where all of those data networks will be connected. So in terms of the green hydrogen, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, uh, places like desert fruit, for example, mm -hmm. those are the use cases for 5G, and that's where we will be looking to roll out niche 5G uh, networks. Okay. Now, as we begin to wrap up our conversation this morning, what can you especially, you mentioned that you wanted to thank your customers for being patient. What are some of, what is the vision for the next years, especially in terms of overcoming connectivity issues, you know, challenges, and providing exceptional services to your customers? What can they expect? So, we want to provide um, a, 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 a reliable connectivity services that are affordable as well. We know our services are currently affordable um, and we, when we bring in the good quality of service, um, that's going to uh, uh, um, be more stable 
um, we will become the preferred ICT service provider um, that we envision to be under our current uh, current plan. Mm -hmm. So we've got the the, the the pricing element right. Mm -hmm. Now we're working on the connectivity, the stable connectivity, and that's really um, our vision and where we're going to be to be going. Like I said, because we are playing catch up, it will take a little bit of a while, and because the network has been there for for quite a while now, it will fail here and there, um, but we're, gonna, we're going to be honest about it and admit it. But what I want to assure the Namibian nation is that we do have a plan, we do have projects, we do have a big part of our uh, funding or, uh, um, uh, that, we're going to, that we have available and funding that we're going to sort out uh, very soon. We are in negotiations and in talks um, to address that. And then we would then see improved quality of services uh, um, in the next uh, um, uh, five years. Any parting thoughts before we let you go this morning? Really, it is just to really thank people like yourselves, who is our customer, um, that's always supporting us, giving us encouraging uh, feedback. We, we appreciate that on social media and everywhere. I really want to assure everyone that I see those posts. We, we address them and we uh, distribute it and share with the team to make sure that every part of those are addressed, even though we don't respond to each and every uh, message that's, that's being sent. So I, we really appreciate that feedback. And we are really there as Telecom Namibia to change. It will take a little bit of a while, but we will get there. And thanks for your support. Also, if you see something, say something. If you see copper theft, if you see uh, suspicious people around manholes um, and so on, please inform the police. We're working with the police to stop the copper theft. Okay. Doctor, thank you very much for making time to speak to us this morning. Thanks very much for having us. Okay. Now, that was Dr. Stanley Shanapinda, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Telecom Namibia, talking to us some of the challenges that Telecom is facing and also providing revenue that on how to address that to ensure that they become the preferred ICT provider in the country moving forward.